What do you do? I'm down Bolton and I'm going across snowboarder. Here we have us uh, some information about uh, the style because on menstylefashion.com we have uh, we have some interviews also of uh, some uh, riders here on the border cross like Sean Paul and others they will uh, be on the red carpet also just uh, doing the defile with uh, dressed in suit uh, pretty amazing uh, when uh, the fashion is just mixing together with the sport. Uh, this is a border cross, this is snowboard cross, uh, this is light motocross. Six riders all together racing the top three, the first three to cross the finish line will move uh, into the next. You know, the race is getting closer and closer. Are you getting nervous? How are you feeling? Talk us through it all. I'm um, feeling a little bit nervous, but I think that's healthy. I think if you're not feeling nervous, you're not going to do that well. I think if you're feeling nervous, you can try and do that like 15% better or 15% worse. So. Um, to really rise to full potential, I think you need to be a little bit nervous and a little bit on edge. And you, can't not, you don't know what to expect and you kind of got to be excited about it and take it all positively and um, go from there. I mean, this is what you do it for, isn't it? Yeah. For these moments. And for, yeah, for the adrenaline, for the rush and for the perfect days with the perfect weather, perfect course and riding with friends and yeah. trying to beat them all. I mean, I was, I've been up there for an hour just on takeoff. You know, what do you do? Do you blank everything out? What's it that moment? Um, we spend like the first few days kind of riding the course and getting out really well and visual and whatnot. So when I'm in the gate, I kind of just try and not really think about it, clear my mind, and the body already knows kind of what to do and how to move through the course. And there'll be one or two things to focus on each run, but you sure already know what you're doing pretty much. And um, you just automatically, naturally, you know the feel, you know how it's going to run. And um, yeah. When you sort of, you know, because um, you're kind of banging into people and stuff like that, how does it, you know, inform the one that's game over? But yeah. is it a respect? Like it doesn't matter. I'm trying to just. There's get a little bit. Of, there's a little bit of push and shove. Um, there's, there's not too much. You can't push anyone straight on, but you can definitely hold your line and you can move people out towards the fence wow. or um, protect your space. That's perfectly fine. And people do go down. There are big crashes and people get injured. But if it was a really safe sport, then it wouldn't be as exciting. It wouldn't be as fun. And stuff like that. And at the end, when it's all over and you've knocked someone over, like, are there sort of headlocking moments? There are sometimes in the finish crowd, there'll be a few people who are a little bit tense and like, why'd you do that for? Yeah. But um, it's okay, the day, everyone's friends, he knows it's racing and um, you see the next day and everyone's best friends, so it's okay. It's Cam, um, I've put Top Man on you today. Um, could it kind of work, this kind of wear in what it you could. do? I wouldn't have expected it to, but it's actually pretty comfy, it keeps you warm and um, it's the kind of thing I'd like to see myself snowboarding around in all day and it's not something that you'd be uncomfortable in or get sick of, it's kind of it's warm, it's comfortable and it looks good. Yeah, because it's stretchy, it's wool, it's a limited exactly. edition, yeah? Yeah, it looks good, feels good and yeah, I'm liking wearing it. Brilliant, cool. Um, how fast are you? I'm, I'm trying to catch up to you. And I, how fast are you going? Um, down a run, not necessarily that quick, but in a course, you get up to between 80 and 100 k's now. That'll be kind of top speed. Um, there's certain courses which are faster than others. X Games, which is coming up in a week, that people reach 100 all the time. And, um, yeah, it's pretty quick when you're travelling with five other guys around you. Holy shit! Um, um, you were saying that you've got a real, you've only got seconds, milliseconds to sort of think about the, the moves within a race. Yeah, it's sort of it's good second decisions, it's not really something you can think about and then react to it. It's kind of you see something happening and you instinct, you react to it. All the training and all the stuff, all the training camps you do, all the practice that you do outside of races, that's what that's what um, gives you a split second decision making and it's going to make you, or give, give you the right decision. So, yeah, you don't really have long enough to think about it, but... Uh, certainly trying to help those decisions. Um, how dangerous is it up there for you guys? Um, quite dangerous. I mean, from, from a spectator's point of view, it's, I reckon a lot more uh, dangerous than we kind of see it. We kind of think, um, we kind of know the risks, and, but you kind of got to be confident and back yourself to get out of those situations and when you are in danger to get out of it, to pass someone and get through the heat rather than hitting them and crashing and possibly getting hit by everyone else around you. So. It's, da it's dangerous, but um, every time you race, you, it's, it's all calculated risks, and uh, there are mistakes and things do go wrong, but everyone knows that, and you prepare for it, and you do everything you can to avoid it. We had a real big injury in Andorra. Talk us through what happened there. L not with you, but, you know. There were a few big injuries. A few people got knocked out, completely knocked out. There was a traumatic brain injury. There was someone was put in an induced coma because they were having violent spasms after hitting their head, and 
he's all right, thankfully, and he's back and he's talking, and um, that's always good to hear. But there's a few other knee injuries, there's broken feet and uh, some shoulder injuries too. So there's a lot of injuries for that for one race, but um, it's no secret. Everyone riding knew that there was a risk, and they weren't coming here thinking it was going to be a walk in the park by any means, and thinking that they were just going to come and just ride down a course nice and slowly and just be nice and safe. It's not really what we're into. Um, uh, regarding helmets and goggles, like, do you smash them? Do they break? You know, what? How to, you know, you know, talk us through some. Yeah, I've had a few crashes. I've broken helmets, completely split them, and um, broken a lot of goggles before from hitting my face. And just the other day, in my heat here in Andorra, I got hit in the face in the air and um, got whacked, and I broke my goggles and split the lens the whole way up. And um, it's kind of a little bit off-putting, but you can't stop racing. It's another race. You can't just pull over the side and fix them or get a new pair of goggles. You've got to keep going. And, um, that's what I did. I just kept, kept running it. Yeah. Um, your sponsors are okay. Cam, you know, um, what's your greatest fear? Um, maybe sharks. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, maybe sharks. I don't really think I'm that scared too many things. Maybe heights. Heights? Oh, maybe heights. It's weird though. I'd, I'm happy being, like, I'm happy jumping, being, um, like, 30 feet in the air, like, or however high, it doesn't really phase me, but standing on the edge of a balcony that's like three metres, ooh, edgy, <laughs> don't. Um, I had a bet with a few friends a few years ago, and uh, they said that, they bet that if, they said if I make the Olympics, then they were gonna get a few tattoos, and my last name's Bolts, my nickname's Bolts, and so they're gonna get two lightning bolts on their asses, so that's, um, I'm glad I won that bet, and I wasn't the one that ended up getting tattoos. <laughs> <laughs> Um, talk about your hair. My hair. Yep. Um, my hair is pretty weird. It's pretty crazy. I don't really know where it comes from. Both my parents have straight hair. Um, I have one uncle with curly hair, and that's it. And my, both my brother and sister, they both have the same hair as me. And yeah, we don't really know where it came from. I think it must have skipped four or five generations. Wow. Are you into male grooming, like a bo um, you know, body scrubbing, and you know? Not when it comes to my hair, not at all. I just kind of let it go and it's kind of just got its own wacky style. Yeah. Um, yeah, not too much. I don't really have that much hair on my body, so I don't really need to get rid of it. <laughs> Brilliant. What about facial scrubs and body scrubs? Is that something that terrifies you? Yeah, it's not something I've ever really messed around with or not really a world I've delved into. <laughs> <laughs> Brilliant. These, these are all relevant questions. Let me think of something else. How much pressure is on you right now to perform, you know? Um, the better you get, the more pressure there is. And when you're kind of, kind of new to the sport and new to the level you're riding at, there's, you kind of have the underdog factor and you're not really expected to do big things. And so anything you do do well, it's kind of a, it's kind of a bonus. And um, once you start doing better, though, then there's more pressure on you from coaches, from friends, from family, from everyone, especially from, from yourself. I put a lot of pressure on myself. Um, kind of a perfectionist when it comes to my riding and I don't like making mistakes and I judge myself pretty harshly and yeah I suppose I put a fair bit of pressure on myself. Yeah no that's good. Um, does the travelling kind of mess with, with how you perform as well? It must be a bit. No? Travelling does. When when you have to travel all the way before a race you're a bit jet lagged, you're a little bit fatigued, you're just tired, you don't know why, you're not eating so much at the right times. You just feel a little bit flat and low on energy. But it's, is like a lot of our races in Europe, so the Europeans have advantages like a short flight or a short drive in their racing. But um, then when they have to go to America or wherever I'm based for a season, that it's the other way around and the Americans have the advantage. So it's kind of a two-way street and during the southern winter when everyone's here and they've got no snow, see so we're at home, we're training and anyone that wants to come down and train too, like they have to fly and they have to adjust and it's tricky for them. So. It kind of does make a big difference to the way to the way you compete, the way you feel, the way you train. But um, everyone deals with it, and everyone's in the same boat. Um, as a whole group, there's a lot of pressure I'm sensing at, with this sport in particular. Yeah, there's a lot of pressure in this sport, um, especially this year. This this year, probably more so than any, because it's Olympic year, and people are stressing about getting results and coming to the Olympics with confidence, or people are battling just to get a spot in the Olympics. So. There's a lot of pressure and often the results in Olympic year are different and you can't really tell who's going to be fast and who's not, who's going to have confidence and who's going to be riding well. Or 
it's, it's kind of it's kind of different year and it's got a different feel about it and it's cool it's exciting it's different yeah no talk us through um how much pressure is to get into the olympics you know there's a lot there's a lot of pressure getting into the olympics there's, there's it varies from team to team because some teams like the us or the italians that have eight guys that are in contention, 12 guys that are in, that are in contention for four spots and we're coming from Australia, we're a bit luckier. Yeah, there's not as much pressure for first spots per se between people, but you just have to perform to get the to get the results that you need just to be there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, any regrets? No regrets. No regrets. No, I think if you have regrets, then it's not it's not a sport or kind of a lifestyle where you can have regrets because any mistakes you make, you've got to learn from, and it's not something that you don't want to you don't want to be. You don't want to be regretting making decisions. You want to you want to be comfortable with the decisions you make and live by them and learn from them. And that's how you grow as a person. Um, any particular? Um, if you were to be in a picture, like a painting, what would it be? What would? Um, mine's like the Last Supper. I'd like right. to have been hanging around with Jesus and that crew, but a painting of me. Um, or who you'd want to be part of? I'd want to be getting barreled on a wave, surfing. Ha ah, ah. ha. That's what I want to paint him, if I could have any painting of yeah, it. I find in, um, as an athlete, on an Australian perspective, they either love or hate you. Do, do you find that? Like, if you don't perform, oh, what's he doing? Crikey, he's sorted out. Are you, yeah, do you... the media in Australia, for sure, they'll jump on the bandwagon. And if you're doing well, they'll love it, and you'll have so much positive, positive press. And, um, but as soon as you step out of line or do something bad, they're, they're pretty quick to jump on you too. So. Does that mess with your head a bit? I don't think you can let it. If you let things like that mess with your head, then you're not going to perform your best. And yeah, you can't. Brilliant.